Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be a quick leveling guide for all of you DKs out there. I'm going to go over some general information and some DK specific information as well to get you started with Shadowlands leveling. So the first thing that I want to cover is a little bit more generalized um, as far as consumables that you should be using, the overall way you should be approaching leveling as well as covering a little bit about some tips and tricks that you can utilize to get to level cap faster. So first of all, for consumables, um, you don't really need all that many. You will need gun shoes, I recommend probably around 100, um, goblin gliders, probably like 40 to 60 will do you good. Then you will also want um, a few draught of the 10 lands. You can buy these if you're hoard in the Tsar Allure. Um, if I can show you here on the docks, there's a uh, vendor right here that you can buy them from. And then if you're lions, you can buy them from Boralus. Um, have some health pots, a few lightfoot potions. You can only use lightfoot up until level 51. Same with this draught. Um, so it will only help you out in the Maw. Then you will want some potions, um, offensive potions. Those should just be keybound or macroed to your offensive abilities. You don't really have to think about when you use them. They don't give you a significant boost, but they help you out a little bit. And then augment runes, again, you will only be able to use up to level 51. So if you don't have the permanent one, just buy a few um, off the auction house. They're super cheap. And then have a few um, like staff foods, DPS foods, or bear tartar on you. Other consumables that you can use is the 3% movement speed gem and the 5% movement speed gem. This will just help you move along a little bit faster. And then for your mount, you can buy the light step hoof plates, which give you 20% increased ground mount speed. Um, so it'll just help you get from point A to point B faster, especially if you're a DK, you don't need water walking because you have um, the Path of Frost ability. So, you know, and if you're leveling in a group, you can provide that to the whole group. So none of them need it either. So 20% mount speed is a little bit better than the water walking. Um, one thing to note about gun shoes is that they have been nerfed to no longer be usable in the Maw. So while you're in the Maw, you pretty much just have to spam out Lightfoot Potions and Goblin Gliders, um, which kind of sucks. But Gun Shoes do help everywhere else in the game, and going through with Gun Shoes is faster than going on Mount Speed, um, so you pretty much just want to use it on cooldown when you have to move longer distances. So as far as DK-specific things, um, the talent build that I'm using for Frost is Cold Heart, Murder Sufficiency. Here you can take anything, Avalanche, Wraith Walk. You can take either Gathering Storm or Glacial Advance. I just take Gathering Storm because it doesn't really matter. Um, if you're like in Heroic or Mythic gear, you're going to be doing enough damage that you don't really have to worry about it too much. Then in the last roll, we take Obliteration. Make sure you have War Mode turned on because this will not only speed up leveling, from getting 10% more, or if you're Alliance, I think you get even more than that, you get access to Chill Streak and Necrotic Aura, both of which significantly increase your damage. Chill Streak will pretty much delete any mobs that you pull, just pull two or more mobs together, press Chill Streak, and watch them absolutely disappear. And this ability will do huge amounts of damage all the way up until level 60. Necrotic Aura will buff your damage, and if you're leveling in a party, the damage of everyone else. And then for the last talent, you can pretty much take anything. I just take Transfusion, um, gives a little bit of runic power, and if I'm in trouble, I just spam out Death Strikes. So that's pretty much the build. Um, as far as weapons and stats, just put on your best, highest eye level Azerite. Um, doesn't matter what the traits are because those get disabled. So if you have 145s from Mythic, put those on. But in general, you just want to put on the highest eye level as right you have. In general, the same goes for all the other pieces as well, since eye level tends to be better, or main stat tends to be better than secondary stats. Um, but if you have ones with socket, you can sacrifice like five at eye level for it. Um, one thing to mention for DKs in particular, if you're leveling as Frost, you can use Razor Ice and Fallen Crusader if you're leveling in a group, but if you're leveling by yourself, the Unending Thirst um, Runeforge is going to help you out a little bit because it gives you movement speed and it will heal you. 
So you can just put that on one of your weapons instead. Um, however, for me, for example, I will be leveling two characters at the same time. So it doesn't matter if one of my characters is moving significantly faster. It's because I'm being held back by my slowest character, which is going to be my second character. Um, there's not really much point in me using this personally. But in general, I think this is a good enchant to be used using while leveling. Uh, if you are choosing to level as Unholy, this is probably the build I would go with. I will serve Unholy Blight Asphyxiate, um, Pestilent Postules. Just because Soul Reaper is too difficult to time on mobs that die in a few seconds. Um, then Wraith Walk, Unholy Pact, Unholy Assault. And then for PvP talents, you kind of have a few choices. I would take Raze Abomination and Necrotic Aura for sure. Um, and then the third one is kind of down to you. Do you want a little bit more defensive or do you want to take Decomposing Aura? So that one is kind of up to you. And same with Unholy. If you are leveling in a group, um, then probably the Unending Thirst weapon enchant won't help you too much because it doesn't benefit you too much to be a lot faster than everyone else in your group since you are going to be held back by how fast they all can move. Um, so if you're leveling in a group, just probably take Fallen Crusader. If you're leveling by yourself, you can take Unending Thirst. And the same situation goes for Azerite, just go for highest eye level and for the items. In general, I do recommend leveling as Frost because it is significantly easier and faster. Um, since there's no ramp up time, you're able to essentially dish out damage immediately as soon as you pull a mob. And especially in those early levels, mobs die super quick if you're mythic geared. Um, so as Unholy, by the time you like stack up your wounds and start actually dropping your DND and dishing out damage, they're pretty much dead. Uh, whereas Frost, you just pull them together, you press Chill Shriek, and they disappear. Um, so it's a lot easier. But once you get to those later levels, um, the difference between the two specs starts to shrink. But in general, I think you're better off playing Frost. Okay, now for the leveling process itself. The first stage of leveling is in the Maw. Here is where you want to use as many Light Foot Potions as possible. Make sure you have your Augment Runes up um, and your Draught of 10 Lands active because this will just give you a little bit more experience until you hit level 51. Um, once you get out of the Maw, you get the Oribos quest line. Again, this you want to do as quickly as possible. And it's key to get ahead early in Shadowlands leveling because it is a linear process. It, the p player base is no longer distributed between multiple zones um, with everyone you know, choosing what they think is the coolest zone to start with. Everyone will get funneled into the same zones, same quest line, same... Um, direction so it's important to get ahead early to miss um the huge crowds so basically once you get to Oribos, you do the little introduction quest and then you get sent to bastion from bastion um so bastion meldraxis and ardenweald you pretty much just only want to do the story quest um don't do any side quests just do the story quest and you will notice that the story quests actually have different uh, icons um, so you just want to do those and you want to do the bonus objectives that are along the way. I think there's one in each zone and then there's two in Revendreth. Then once you get to Revendreth, you want to finish the main story quest and do a few side quests. Um, you want to do side quests in the first town and then once you get towards the end of your storyline quest, you want to do a few more. Pretty much you will get about nine, nine and a half levels. Uh, depending on if you have war mode on, uh, if you're using draught early on in the maw, just by doing the main storyline. And then a few extra side quests, you will hit level 60 and you're able to start actually um, progressing the end game content. Now, if you're leveling an alt character or your death knight is a second character that you're leveling, there is a slightly faster way of doing this. Um, once you've done the introduction questline in the Maw and end up in Oribos, you will be presented between leveling through the Threads of Fate system, which skips the storyline, or repeating the storyline. So if you have a group of five people, make sure to skip the storyline, so pick the Threads of Fate system, um, and then just queue normal dungeons while you go around to each zone doing the bonus objectives. So there's going to be a few bonus objectives in each zone, um, that you want to do and just do those between dungeon queues and spam out as many dungeons as you can and that's going to be a little bit faster than doing the storyline but again if you're leveling by yourself you're much better off just replaying the storyline and leveling your character the same way you did your main thank you so much for watching this video i hope you are going to have fun at leveling your death knights in shadowlands 
And if you like to watch me level, um, I will be leveling two characters at the same time. You will find me at twitch.tv slash Hyperion29 on release day. Uh, hope to see you there. And again, thanks for watching the video. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.